Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be talking about geometry terms. This is a part two. In the first one, we talked about points, lines, and planes. Today, we're going to be talking about postulates, theorems, and proofs. All right. A postulate is a mathematical statement that is just assumed to be true. They're like the building blocks for most other things. They're often so obvious that we don't really have trouble accepting that they're true. And sometimes we overlook them because they're so obvious. We say, well, no kidding. All right, these are often statements that we go, duh. <laughs> we see them and go, well, of course. That makes sense. But what we need to do is put together postulates of statements that are true to try and help us build up to other statements. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's look at um, a couple of statements here. First postulate, two points determine a line. I drew this in here. This is point A and point B. And that's how you determine a line. We talked about that a little bit in the previous lesson. That's what a line is. It's almost like defining the term. Two points determine a line. There's point A, point B, it makes a line. That's a postulate. It's something that is accepted as true. Yes, if you have two points, you have a line. You can make a line, sorry, through those two points. Three non-collinear non points determine a plane. It's again, it's, it's kind of like this is defining what is a plane. Well, you can determine a plane by three non-collinear points. And by having those statements there, we know that these are true. We accept them as fact, but we sometimes need to state the obvious, and that's oftentimes what a postulate is. It's basically sometimes stating something that's pretty obvious. All right? That's different than a theorem, because a theorem is a mathematical statement that has been or needs to be proven. After it's proven, we can accept it as true, but it still needs to be proven. So let's take a look at an example. All triangles have 180 degrees. That's a statement that you would need to prove. Maybe you've proven this statement before. Maybe in a previous math class, you took a triangle and cut it into three pieces and arranged those angles. Um, cut. I guess you'd have to cut the pieces so that their angles line up. And you would see that they're in this, they would form a straight line of 180 degrees. Or perhaps you measured the angles inside of several triangles. No matter what triangle you create, you can create a crazy looking one like that, or one that's a nice right angle triangle. Okay, it could be obtuse or acute. It could be any type of triangle. And when you create them, if you measure these three, these three angles and add them up, you'll get 180 degrees. That's something you would have to prove, right? So that would be an example of a theorem, a mathematical statement that has been or needs to be proven. Okay? This statement, you can't just make it and everyone goes, yeah, that's obvious. You would need to, to prove that it's true. So let's take a look at these four statements and decide whether they are postulates or whether they're theorems. Let's take a look at the statement number one, two parallel lines never meet. Is that a statement that's just like, duh, that's obvious, or is that a statement that you would need to prove? That would be a postulate, all right? Postulate is, again, it's kind of like defining the term. We know that two parallel lines never meet because that's what makes them parallel. So that is a postulate that is definitely basically giving us a statement that is pretty obvious. All right, if the side of a square is s, then its volume is s cubed. All right, that is a theorem, right? We would have to prove that that's not something that's just intuitively obvious. This is a statement, this is a true theorem that has been proven, but it needs to be proven. You can't just make a statement that's like that and, and kind of say, yeah, that's obvious, okay? How about this, fathers are men? That would be a postulate. That's something that's kind of given. In, inside the term father is an implied male thing, right? Father is a man. So fathers are men. So that would be part of kind of the building block of all uh, the next statement I'm going to make here. It's just kind of part of the definition. All right, if I am a father, then I am a man. All right, this here is another theorem that would need to be proven. You'd have to prove, first off, that I am a father, right? <laughs> and then 
you would use this postulate of fathers are men to prove that that statement is true. All right. Usually, when you have an if-then statement, that's going to be a characteristic of a theory or a theorem. All right. Okay. So that's part of this whole process. Postulates are basic building blocks, basically defining terms almost, and then theorems will take those postulates often and build them into making something that we need to prove is true. All right? Okay. Let's look at how we prove something is true, and that's through using a proof. When we're talking about mathematics, and we will be a lot this year in geometry, we are looking for a proof or a method for proving that a theorem is true. Here's an example of a proof. I'm giving a statement here. I make these mathematic statements here. And then I say the reason why I made these statements. I'm not going to explain all of what this is. This is just an example. If we have AB is equal to CD, that's our given statement at the beginning. Proofs will begin with what you are given. And then, in this case, we added BC to both sides of the equal sign. That's the property of equality. Whenever you add something to both sides of the equal sign, it's addition property of equality. And then this is, this one here is a little bit more complicated, but if you have um, three points, one, two, and three, and those points are A, B, and C, there. Then you could say the line segment AB plus the line segment BC is equal to the line segment AC. All right? And that's all that this is stating. And that's the segment addition postulate. So that's going to be part of our, um, our proof. This is the reason for it. And then our next one, so we took this side here, AB plus BC is AC, and BC plus CD is BD, again using the, the segment addition postulate. And then we are end up with our final answer. Therefore, AC is equal to BD. And we, do, we solve that using the substitution property of equality. All right. This is, again, you don't have to necessarily understand this exact specific proof, but this is just an example of a proof. It's a way that we use mathematic reasoning and mathematic properties or postulates, right, statements that we just accept as true to make sort of a logical step-by-step -step reason why this is helps us reach this point. Okay? And that's what proofs are. And we're going to get pretty good at, at uh, using proofs and showing proofs as we go through the course. But just um, kind of quick background there. Now, the gentleman, if you feel some pain as you go through a proof or you start feeling like, wow, <sighs> this, is, this is a little bit tough, this is the man that you can blame. Um, <laughs> see how I passed the buck on that one. This is Mr. Euclid. And we call Euclidean geometry, geometry that builds logically. It starts with terms like points and lines and planes. And we use those, those definitions to make postulates. And we use those postulates to combine together and form a proof. And the proofs prove theorems are true. All right, so it's just a logical order of events, like a sequence. All right, and again, um, these statements and postulates were created and, and thought of oftentimes before Mr. Euclid, but he's the one who kind of put them in a logical order. And so we call Euclidean geometry, geometry that is basically builds logically from one thing to the next. That's a, a basic definition of that and what we'll be talking about, what we'll be using, largely Euclidean geometry. All right, so I just wanted to point some of that out. Again, our terms for today, we talked about um, postulates, we talked about proofs, and we talked about theorems. Here they are at the bottom. And they are just an extension of how we would use 
some of those other terms that we talked about before. Hope this session has been helpful for you and have an absolutely wonderful day.